Hi guys, it's me Toby Timurin and this is part 2 to my video on how to digitalize your sketches. If you haven't seen that one, I recommend watching it first and then watching this one. In this video, I'll be showing you how to color your line art in Photoshop. So let's get started. Toby Timurin Okay, so we have our line art all done and now it's time to color it. I'm going to start with skin. So go over to the original sketch layer, which should be on the bottom of all the other layers. Select it and then hit add a new layer. Then head over to the top, click on edit, and then click on fill. A prompt will show up and you'll get to select what to fill the layer with. In this case, we want a plain color. I chose gray. This is optional, but I find it easier to see when coloring. Now remember the eyebrow I left on a separate layer so I could fix it later? Now we find the layer the eyebrow is on and then we get our eraser. Make sure that it's at 100% hardness. And 100% opacity. Erase what you don't want and then you fixed it without too much work or headache. Okay, now to stop myself from getting confused, I'm going to name all of the layers. To rename your layers, simply double click on the layer and then type in your desired text. Now let's group all our line art layers. You can hold down the shift key on your keyboard, select all your line art layers, then once they are all selected, let go of the shift button and then hit C to all G to group them all together. Now another way to group them is to hit the create a new group button, then selecting all the layers you want in the group and dragging them inside the group. They are now inside the folder, making it easier to find, then sifting through a million layers. You can also expand it to see all of the layers within by clicking the arrow beside the group's name. Then right click on the group and select duplicate group. I then drag one group below all of the layers and this is the backup. I have all of the original layers to edit. Then get the other group and hit CTRL E on your keyboard to merge all the layers. That way the liner is just one layer and this will help us out when we're coloring. Now go back to the gray layer and add a new layer above it. Now select the line art layer, then go over to the magic wand tool. If you see a paintbrush with a selection, simply right click on it and select the magic wand tool. First we will be doing the skin. So still on the line art layer, select all the empty spaces that we want to color. Most of this was just one click, but some areas aren't selected, so we hold the shift key on our keyboard and click on the places we want selected. This adds to the original selection that we made. Now that all of the parts we need skin tone on has been selected, then we are going to go and head over to the top and click on select, then modify, and hit expand. A prompt will show up and you will get to type in how much you want to expand it. I chose 10, then hit OK. You will need to adjust this if your image is smaller or bigger. Now head over to your layer below the line art and select it. It's time to color the skin tone. Go over to the foreground color and click on it. This opens up a prompt where you can choose your color. I'm going to choose a light tan skin tone. After you like the color, simply make sure you have the brush tool selected and then go over all the parts that need to have the skin tone. If you're going to be doing a super elaborate shading, I would make a new layer for each shade. But since mine is pretty simple, I'm just going to do it on one layer. Now I'll choose a shade color and change the brush to a 0% hardness, just so that it's easier for it to blend without too much work. I would also change the opacity to around 27%, but it's up to you. Then make the first coat. I like to add tons, then go lighter on the darker shades. I got pretty lazy, so I didn't shade it very much, but you can do more if you wish. Okay, so go back to the line art layer and grab your magic wand tool. This time, select all the parts for his hair. Remember, just hold down the shift key on your keyboard to add more selections to the first one. Then after you have it all selected, go to the top, click on select, then go over to modify and hit expand. Again, I'm going to use the number 10. Now it's all great. Make a layer above the skin tone layer, then choose a color for the hair. I want to use a dark blue. And then apply the first coat. Then get a darker shade of blue and then use that to shade the top and the bottom of the head. I'm also going to change the opacity and hardness for the brush. And 
And then I like to get a really dark color and do some more shading. Now for some highlights. I'll get a nice light shade of blue, then I'll change the opacity and the brush size. I like going for something small, then going bigger and bigger to smooth it out. Now this looks pretty cool, but it can be even cooler! So let's proceed to awesome. Make a new layer above the hair layer and then get your handy dandy pen tool. I'm going to set my foreground color to a darker blue color. Then I'm going to make a bunch of points for shading on the hair. It'll kind of be hard to explain, so hopefully you'll understand what I mean when you watch the video. Okay, so after it's done, we make it a selection, and then time to get your brush out and shade. Make sure it's a very low opacity, and then I like to do a very light shade everywhere. Then increase the opacity and shade some more, but only in certain areas. It gives a really cool effect. Now there are a few parts of the hair color seeping outside of the line art and we need to clean that up. So let's head back to the layers panel. So the hair that's seeping out, make sure that you're on that layer and then hit CTRL on your keyboard and click on the picture of your base hair color. Now that you have a selection around your base hair color, go to select, inverse, then hit delete on your keyboard and now everything outside of the selection is deleted. And ta-da! It's pretty cool! Now I'll name the layers for ease and check to make sure everything's in the right layer. Now let's make a new layer above the skin tone layer. This layer will be for the whites of the eyes. So get out your pen tool and make a circular area around the eyeball. Then fill it with white. And then make a layer above the skin layer so it's below the layer we just made, and then use the brush tool to paint some rosy color on his cheeks. This is optional, but I like to add shine to the cheeks. Simply make the brush really small, then change the hardness to almost 0% or a little higher, and then put it on the cheeks, then change the size a little smaller, and then add one close to the other shine. Now for the eye, make a new layer above the eye whites layer, then grab the ellipse tool and make it oval or circle depending on your eye shape, and make it a little smaller than the line art. Go over to the path panel and then click on the load path as a selection button. Now your path is a selection and you can color inside without ruining the rest of the eye. I want his eyes to be purple, but you can make it any color you like. I'll do a base coat in this purple. Then I'll get a darker purple and shade to the top. Then I'll get a super dark purple and just shade the top. Then get the ellipse tool again and make an oval inside the eye in the darkest shade of purple. Try to smooth it off on the top by shading a bit more, 
Then get an even darker shade and brush it only on the top. Now for some highlights, grab a light color of purple, then change your brush size, and then brush a place near the bottom. You can get as creative as you like, adding more or less, and you can vary the shape too. Okay, now to add a streak of highlight, I'm going to make a path with a pen tool and shape it like a very skinny crescent moon. After you finish, make sure you make a layer above this eye layer. Then go to the path panel and click on the fill path with foreground color button. This looks pretty neat, but I like to head back to the layers panel and then change the layers blending mode to overlay. It's really neat and it will only affect what's on this layer. And then I'm going to add a few shines on a different layer. I'm going to speed this up since you will be making them with the ellipse tool so you'll know what to do. I'm really lazy so I'm going to duplicate the layers and fix it up so it doesn't look too weird. shine on the hair. I'm going to do a really long crescent moon for the hair. Then I'll fill it with the foreground color which I've set to a light blue and change the blending mode to overlay. Then I'm going to add a few ovals and change the layers blending mode to overlay as well. And it's all done! Doesn't it look pretty awesome? Make sure to save often and take lots of breaks. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you didn't watch the first one, this might have been a bit confusing, so you might want to check out the first one and then watch this one again. Also, if you don't have Photoshop and still want to try this out, don't worry, there's a really great open source program called GIMP. It's got all the basic tools that Photoshop has and you'll be able to use this technique in GIMP. The buttons might be in different places though, but once you find them, you'll still be able to make awesome line art. And the great thing about GIMP, it also allows you to save and open .psd files, which are editable Photoshop files. Later on in the future, I'll make a tutorial just for GIMP. That way it will be easier to follow, but for now, this is all I've got, guys. I'll have a link in the description bar for GIMP's official website where you can download the program for free. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day! Transition Music by Tan Music. You can visit them at www.tanmusic.com. Background Music by Kevin McLeod. And you can visit him at www.incomputech.com. Programs used to edit the video are Adobe Premiere Pro CS5 and Adobe Photoshop CS5. Equipment used are an Audio-Technica 2020 USB microphone and the Canon Rebel T1i DSLR with a 50mm macro lens.